Welcome back to the Rays Aerospace commemoration of the Apollo 11 lunar landing on its 50th anniversary. We are counting down from T-minus 17 minutes at the start of the video, and this video will feature the long-awaited launch of the Saturn V with Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin. Except for a brief tour of the command module instrumentation, which has been occupying the three astronauts for the past two hours, and will continue to do so during the launch, I won't be adding much to the proceedings. During the launch, we will see the view as it would have been seen on a color television at the time, and then that will give way to a simulated view once the rocket is out of sight. Shortly after the launch, the public affairs officer replays the audio of the launch. During this time, I'll present the pad camera recordings of the launch, which are of much higher quality than would have been seen live at the time. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're now less than 16 minutes away from the planned liftoff of the Apollo 11 space vehicle. All still going well with the countdown at this time. The astronauts aboard the spacecraft have had a little chance to rest over the last few minutes or so. At least they haven't been uh, busy with procedures with the spacecraft test conductor. In the meantime, we have been uh, performing final checks on the tracking beacons in the instrument unit, which is used as the guidance system during the powered phase of flight. Once we get down to the three minute and 10 second mark in the countdown, we'll go on an automatic sequence. As far as the launch vehicle is concerned, all aspects from there on down will be automatic, run by the ground master computer here in the firing room. This will lead up to the 8.9 minute mark in the countdown when the ignition sequence will begin in those five engines of the first stage, the S1C stage of the Saturn V. At the two second mark, we'll get uh, information and a signal that all engines are running. And at the zero mark in the countdown, once we get the commit signal, the signal that says that the thrust is proper and acceptable, we then will get a commit and lift off as the hold down arms release the vehicle. We have some 7.6 million pounds of thrust pushing the vehicle upward, a vehicle that weighs uh, close to six and a half million pounds. We're now at 14 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This replica of the command module is from Reentry and Orbital Simulator, and we'll be seeing some of it. And I'm not going to obviously go through all the switches, but we should get a sense of the various regions. This is the commander's seat. So this is Neil Armstrong's seat in this case. And first we have here the computer. And this is the computer interface. And the first thing we would do at this point, or probably a little bit earlier, is tell it... Oops. Seem misaligned here. That we are uh, looking for the launch program. And that's program one here. And so it knows that it's going to show us launch information. It's turning this display to the correct orientation. And over to his left are the RCS. This is the reaction control system, the little thrusters on the side of the service module that help with maneuvering. And this determines whether they're off or on main bus A, the electrical bus A, or electrical bus B. And so that's what we've got there. Floodlights and um, various other events. In front, we have how the system is controlled. We have a hand controller off to the side here, but uh, manual, manual attitude control, roll pitch yaw, what kind of rate it is set to, and activating that control. So uh, we should have that powered up. And mainly what they're doing before launch, immediately before launch, is making sure that they can abort with the service module. You'll hear during the launch mode 4, and mode 4 is when they reach the point where they can use the service module to reach orbit. And so a lot of the configuration is just checking that everything is set. First of all, they'll be on internal power, so they'll check the battery, see that its voltage is right, is right and the main bus A and then make sure everything is configured so that in case they need to abort in that particular manner, they'll be ready to do so. And so saying the controls to make sure that that is possible. So this is what the commander's uh, console is like. This is the command module pilot. And these are the tanks for the fuel cells. These are mainly life support systems, cabin fan, 
uh, the temperature in the cabin and their suits, the pressure in the cabin, the CO2, and radiators, uh, coolant loops, and some of the RCS and propellant controls are here, and the fuel in the service module, the docking probe, and below here is where they go through uh, the docking port to the lunar module. So that's down there. And then over on this side is lunar module pilot seat. And here we have fuel cell controls. Uh, we have communication controls down here, which are very important and give a lot of trouble. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the 11 minute mark. Now T minus 10 minutes, 54 seconds on our countdown for Apollo 11. All still go at this time. The astronauts in the spacecraft busy again. The commander, Neil Armstrong, has uh, performed some final uh, switch settings for the stabilization and control system of the spacecraft. The spacecraft also now is on full internal power. This came shortly after the 15 minute mark spacecraft now in the full power of its fuel cells. Up to this time, it had been sharing the load with an external power source. Both Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin have armed their rotational hand controllers, the controllers they use in flight. And we have now gone to the automatic system with the emergency detection system, that system that would uh, cue the astronauts uh, if there's trouble down below with the Saturn V rocket during the powered flight. We're now coming up on the 10 minute mark, 10 minutes away from our planned liftoff. Mark, T minus 10 minutes and counting, T minus 10. We're aiming for our planned liftoff at 32 minutes past the hour. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Okay, so this will be the last time I speak to you before the launch. Let's go through the events that will happen during the launch. The Capcom, the astronaut communicating with the crew from Mission Control, is Bruce McCandless, who was a very patient astronaut indeed. He was selected in 1966, but didn't get to go to orbit until 1984 on the space shuttle. Anyway, first the five F1 engines ignite, and it takes them a few seconds to build up to full thrust. Once they're full thrust, the clamps that have been holding the Saturn V will release. The PAO will announce when the rocket has cleared a launch tower, at which point there will be a slight roll to align with the intended orbit for this launch, and they will begin to pitch down slowly because it doesn't take very long for it to get out of the atmosphere. It primarily needs horizontal speed to essentially wrap its path around the Earth instead of fall back down. Shortly afterwards, the Capcom will announce that their abort mode has changed to Mode 1 Bravo or Mode 1B, which means that the rocket has tilted horizontally enough that if they need to use the launch escape system, it will deploy little canards, aerodynamic surfaces, that will turn the command module so it can deploy its parachute successfully. By the time they reach 30 kilometers in altitude, the canards won't have enough air to function, so instead they go to Mode 1 Charlie, Mode 1C, which will have the command module use its own thrusters to orient for parachute deployment if they need to abort. Preparing for that was among the switch flicks the commander did before launch. Shortly after, the Capcom tells them they have Mode 1C, the center F1 engine on this first stage will shut down to limit G-forces on the crew to about 4G which is the limit to allow them to reach controls. 27 seconds after that, the first stage will separate and the second stage will ignite. There is a structural skirt around the bottom of the second stage that on other rockets would have just been dropped with the first stage, but on Saturn V they were afraid it might bump into the engines or otherwise damage things if separated when no engines were running, so they wait until the second stage is fully underway before dropping that extra mass, and this will be announced as skirt set. Then the launch escape system will be jettisoned, it will use its rockets to fly away without the command module, and the windows on the command module will finally be uncovered. This leads to abort mode 2, which would require the command and service module to separate from the rest of the rocket, and the service module engine to steer it clear. At that point, the third stage doesn't have enough fuel to get them to orbit. It will have enough by about 5.5 minutes into the launch. The Capcom will announce S4B to COI capability when the third stage can get them to orbit if the second stage fails. Close to the end of the second stage, its center engine will shut down to avoid excessive vibrations on the stage. About 40 seconds later, the engines change their fuel oxidizer mixture ratio to throttle down as well for the same purpose, and this will be mentioned as a PU shift. Shortly before the second stage finishes, the Capcom will tell the crew that they have abort mode 4 which means their service module can get them to orbit if the third stage fails. 
Around 15 seconds later, the second stage separates, the third stage ignites, and it will continue for two and a half minutes until they reach orbit. I know that was a lot of stuff happening very quickly, but that's how launches are. And uh, you'll just hear these announcements as they take place. You're not controlling the rocket, so it's okay. Uh, in fact, the astronauts are not controlling the rocket directly either. They just need to know uh, what will happen if things go wrong, of course. And I will see you on the other side of the launch. One last thing I'll mention is that down the road and throughout the audio, you'll hear LOS and AOS. LOS is loss of signal and AOS is acquisition of signal. And that's just their way of talking about when they're going to have communication support from ground stations and satellites. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the six minute mark in our countdown for Apollo 11. Now five minutes, 52 seconds and counting. We're on time at the present time for our plane liftoff of 32 minutes past the hour. Spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin now has completed the status check of his personnel in the control room. All report they are go for the mission. And this has been reported to the test supervisor, Bill Schick. The test supervisor are now going through some status checks. Launch operations manager Paul Donner reports go for launch. Launch director Rocco Patron now gives a go with five minutes, 20 seconds and counting. Coming up shortly, that swing arm up at the spacecraft level will come back to its fully retracted position. This should occur at the five minute mark in the count. In the meantime, the lunar module tele telemetry has been powered down. We took a good look at Eagle and it looks good. The spacecraft test conductor for the lunar module reported that Eagle was go. The swing arm now coming back to its fully retracted position as our countdown continues. T minus four minutes, 50 seconds and counting. Skip Chauvin informing the astronauts that the swing arm now coming back. The astronauts will have a few more reports coming up in the countdown. The last business report will be from Neil Armstrong at the 45 second mark in the count when he gives a status on the final alignment of the stabilization and control system. We're now passing the four minute, 30 second mark in the countdown. Still go at this time. minutes 15 seconds the test supervisor now is informed launch vehicle test conductor norm carlson you are go, go for launch from this time down uh carlson uh, handles the countdown as the launch vehicle uh begins to build up we're now hitting the four minute mark four minutes mark four minutes and counting we are go for apollo 11. we'll go on an automatic sequence uh, starting at three minutes and seven seconds Three minutes, 45 seconds and counting. In the final uh, abort checks between uh, several key members of the crew here in the control center and the astronauts, launch operations manager Paul Donnelly wished the crew on the launch team's behalf good luck and Godspeed. Three minutes, 25 seconds and counting. We're still go at this time. We'll be coming up on the automatic sequence about uh, 10 or 15 seconds from this time. All still go at this time. Neil Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. Firing command coming in now. We are on the automatic sequence. We're approaching the three minute mark in the count. T minus three minutes and counting. T minus three, we are go with all elements of the mission at this time. We're on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. T minus two minutes, 45 seconds and counting. The members of the launch team here in the control center monitoring a number of what we call red line values. These are tolerances we don't want to go above and below in temperatures and pressures. They're standing by to call out any deviations from our plans. Two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. We're still go on Apollo 11 at this time. The vehicle starting to pressurize as far as the propellant tanks are concerned and all is still go as we monitor our status for it. Two minutes, 10 seconds and counting. The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon at liftoff will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. We just passed the two minute mark in the countdown. 
T minus one minute, 54 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates that the oxidizer tanks in the second and third stages now have pressurized. We continue to build up pressure in all three stages uh, here at the last minute uh, to prepare it for liftoff. T minus one minute, 35 seconds on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. All indications uh, coming in uh, to the control center at this time indicate we are go. One minute, 25 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates the third stage completely pressurized. 80 second mark has now been passed. We'll go on full internal power at the 50 second mark in the countdown. Guidance system goes on internal at 17 seconds, leading up to the ignition sequence at 8.9 seconds. We're approaching the 60 second mark on the Apollo 11 mission. T minus 60 seconds and counting. We pass T minus 60. 55 seconds and counting. Neil Armstrong just reported back it's been a real smooth countdown. We passed the 50 second mark. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Okay, we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. Plus 30 seconds. Roll complete and a pitch is programmed. One Bravo. One Bravo is a abort control mode. Altitude's two miles. Houston, you're good at one minute. Downrange one mile, altitude three, four miles now. Velocity 2,195 feet per second. through the region of maximum dynamic pressure now. Set eight miles downrange, 12 miles high. Velocity, 4,000 feet per second. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Mark, mode one, Charlie. One, Charlie. Cliff Charlesworth taking a staging status. This is Houston, you are go for staging. Inboard cutoff. Inboard engines out. I'm inboard cutoff. Downrange 35 miles, 30 miles high. Standing by for the outboard engine cut down now. Station. And ignition. Eleven Houston, thrust is go. All engines, you're looking good. Hi, Roger. You're loud and clear, Houston. At three minutes, downrange 70 miles, 
43 miles high, velocity 9,300 feet per second. We got skirt zap. Roger, we confirm skirt zap. Tower's gone. Roger, tower. Neil Armstrong confirming both the engine skirt separation and the launch escape tower separation. Houston, be advised the visual is go today. This is Houston, Roger out. Yeah, they finally gave me a window to look out. Eleven Houston, uh, your guidance has converged. You're looking good. Downrange 140 miles, altitude 62 miles, velocity 10,300 feet per second. 11 Houston, you are go at four minutes. Gotcha. Apollo 11 right on the ground track. Hundred and ninety miles downrange now, seventy two miles high, velocity eleven thousand feet per second. says it's looking good at five minutes. Evan Houston, you are go at five minutes. Roger, you're Apollo 11, go. Downrange 270 miles, altitude 82 miles, velocity 12,472 feet per second. By to S4B to COI capability. Okay. Mark, S4B to COI capability. Roger. Apollo 11 could now get into orbit using the S-4B if necessary. You're sitting in your 11 round. Ah, oh, thank you. You all are coming through beautifully, too. Everyone's reporting go here in the control center. Oh, so it's six minutes. Starting to get more orders. Roger, 11, uh, your go from the ground at six minutes. Apollo 11, this is Houston, level sense arm at eight plus one seven, uh, outboard cutoff at nine plus one one. Level sense arm is the sequence that uh, arranges the staging between the second stage and the third stage. The fuel uncovers uh, a sensor starting that sequence. Predicting that will be uncovered at 8 minutes 17 seconds with outboard engine cutoff 9 minutes 11 seconds on the second stage. Follow 11, go at 7 minutes. 11, this is Houston. Roger, your go from the ground at 7 minutes. Level sense arm at 8 plus 1, 7. Outboard cutoff at 9 plus 1, 1. Roger. Downrange 530 miles. Altitude 95 miles. Velocity 17,358 feet per second. Still right down the ground track, still go at 7 minutes 41 seconds. Roger, we confirm. Inboard engines are out on the second stage as planned.
Apollo 11, go on all sources. In your go at eight minutes. As just felt the mixed relationship. Roger, we got PU shift down here too. This is Houston, you are go for staging, over. Understand, go for staging. And Stand by for mode four capability. For mode four. Mark, mode four capability. Mode four and Apollo 11 could get into orbit using the service propulsion system now. Altitude is 100 miles, downrange 883 miles. Outboard engine cutoff. And ignition. Ignition confirmed, thrust is go, 11. And we have a good third stage now. Velocity 23,128 feet per second. Downrange 1,000 miles, altitude 101 miles. This is Houston. At 10 minutes, you are go. And Roger. 11, go. Capcom Bruce McCandless giving the reports here from the control center. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Predicted cutoff at 11 plus 42. Over. 1142, Grinch. Downrange 1,175 miles, velocity 24,190 miles feet per second, altitude 102 nautical miles. Apollo 11 still go on all sources. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are go at 11. Third stage shut down at 11 minutes 42 seconds. Velocity 25,254 feet per second. Downrange 1,400 miles now. Altitude uh, 102.8 nautical miles. Shut down. Shut down right on time. 1.4 by 103.6. Roger, shut down, and we copy 101.4 by 103.6. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are confirmed to go for orbit. We show in certain. This is Houston. The booster is safe. All right, Roger. We show velocity at insertion 25,568 feet per second.
Apollo 11, this is Houston. The booster has been configured for orbital coast. Both spacecraft are looking good. Over. Apollo 11, this is Houston, Vanguard LOS at uh, 1535, AOS Canaries at uh, 1630, over. Okay, thank you. This is Apollo Control, based on a vector from the instrument unit of the third stage of Saturn V. Here on the ground, we're showing an orbit of 102.5 by 99.7 nautical miles. Uh, the flight dynamics officer, Dave Reed, wants to uh, get some radar tracking to refine this orbit, and he, he will report a uh, refined orbit after more radar tracking. So Apollo 11 is now in orbit around the Earth and they have about an orbit and a half, about two and a half hours to make sure everything seems to be in good condition to transfer to the moon. They have just had their first loss of signal but they'll regain it over the Canary Islands in about a minute. The losses of signal when they go on the opposite side of the moon from the Earth will be much more significant. The transfer to the moon will occur two hours and 44 minutes into the mission and we're currently just past 16 minutes in. I will have those high definition views of the launch for you in a bit. Concerning the videos going forward, the next video is a coast video that will have none of me but a lot of the astronauts, and will cover their time in orbit around the Earth before the translunar injection, the engine burn that will take them to the moon. We'll hear them chatting away in the command module right from the start of the video, and because it's not always easy to tell what they're saying because they're not talking directly into microphones or anything like that, they're moving around the vehicle and sorting things out, I'll also display the official transcript interspersed with the simulated views of the spacecraft. By the way, the official transcript is not always correct. In the video following that, we will have the translunar injection, the transfer to the moon, followed by the command and service module separating from the rest of the vehicle, turning around, and docking with the lunar module. During that video, I'll start to discuss some of the historical missions that led to Apollo 11, detailing the long, hard road to landing on the moon, starting with Sputnik. That documentary aspect of this coverage will continue in the videos covering Apollo 11's capture into lunar orbit, and then the lunar landing. This is Apollo Control. The Canary Island Station has acquisition of Apollo 11 now. We'll continue to stand by live for any air-to-ground communication. We're showing an orbital weight of the combined vehicles of 297,914 pounds. By you, Houston Compact, Canary Compact. Apollo 11, this is Houston through Canary, over. Uh, Roger, uh, reading you loud and clear, our insertion check list is complete, and uh, we have no abnormalities. Uh, Roger, and uh, I'd like
like to pass up your delta azimuth correction at this time. Are you ready to copy? Stand by. Roger, go ahead. Ready to copy. Okay, uh, delta azimuth correction is plus zero decimal two two. That is plus decimal two two, and we do recommend the P fifty two alignment. Over. Okay, we'll go ahead with the P fifty two and uh, the tracking angle plus zero decimal two two. Uh, Roger, and your LOS time at Canary is 2337. Over. 2337. Houston, Roger out. The P 52 alignment is a realignment in the inertial measurement unit, the IMU, which determines the spacecraft's orientation. We'll hear a lot about it during the mission, and basically, the crew has to use a sextant to figure out their orientation using the stars not unlike seafaring explorers, though they get a lot of help from the guidance computer. We'll hear Michael Collins working on that in the next video. Stored in the computer is a definite orientation in space defined by the stars, and the astronauts will call this a ref smat. Periodically, especially when the spacecraft situation is going to change, mission control may change the orientation of the ref smat to better suit what's going on and send up numbers for the computer. It's important to note that the computer on board the spacecraft is not sufficient to do all the hard work of figuring things out, and relies on both the astronauts who are going to be looking at the stars and trying to gauge things from that, as well as much larger and more powerful computers on the ground to do the heavy work. P52 stands for Program 52. Another program you will hear a lot about is Program 00, or P00, which is the idle program and is always pronounced Poo. Mission Control will ask the crew to put the computer into idle, to poo and accept, to make sure the computer isn't busy when information is being updated. From here on out, if you hear background music, that means there won't be any of the original mission audio for the duration of the song, which will always be at least three minutes long. So if you're trying to follow along with the mission in real time but got out of sync, those will be good times to catch up to where you need to be. Unfortunately or fortunately, the gap that we're in right now is less than three minutes, and we should be getting more mission audio less than a minute away. This is Apollo Control based on that initial orbital figures. The uh, orbital period is one hour, 28 minutes, 16 seconds. This uh, number will be refined as also as we get better information on the orbit through radar tracking. At the present time, we're showing an orbital period of one hour, 28 minutes, 17 seconds. We'll continue to stand by live through the Canary Station. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, one minute to LOS Canary. AOS at Tanana Reef, 3704 in VHS Simplex Alpha. Over. This is Houston coming up on LOS Canary, AOS to Nanareve at 3704, Simplex Alpha. Houston out.
And this is Apollo Control at 23 minutes 52 seconds. Canary Island Station has loss of signal from Apollo 11. We have a tape of the air ground during the launch phase. We'll play that for you now. Roger clock. So here are the high definition views of the launch. I'll leave you with them and some music and talk to you again when the astronauts are preparing to burn for the moon. Thank you for watching the Ray's Aerospace commemoration of the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11.